know, car theft is a real common thing these days, and they, they got all kinds of gadgets to lock your steering wheel or sound an alarm or set the car on fire. <laughs> That's all supposed to stop the thief. Well, it's not working. I got a better idea. Get yourself a pretty good hunk of chain, a signal light, and a leg trap of some kind. <laughs> and then what you want to do is uh, set a reasonable price for each of these items, and sell them all at a garage sale. I figure this stuff is worth 35 bucks. So then I take my 35 bills and I buy a car like this, and car theft is just not gonna happen. <laughs> Time for a decaf, you know. <laughs> but I do appreciate the elephant I found here, huh? Actually, the uh, Possum Lake Museum was having some renovations done because the building is older than the exhibits, you know. <laughs> so we offered to let them store their stuff at the lodge. That's where I got off. Well, I think this could come in real handy for keeping guys away from the beer fridge. I mean, kind of a <laughs> ceiling fan, oh, kind of be a. Be careful, Red. What? Boy, it is extremely dangerous to touch old things when you don't know where they've been. Oh, yeah. Is that why Anne Marie never holds your hand? <laughs> Well, I am telling you, Red, that there's a reason those artifacts are in museums. They, they have a, a kind of a supernatural power that transcends the passage of time. Well, so does the Lodge Chili, Dalton. I'm not worried about it. That's not what I'm talking about. Oh. Look what I found. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the kids are going to love this, a 2,000-year-old rapper. <laughs> <laughs> I call him Mummy Dearest. Oh. <laughs> You guys shouldn't be <laughs> fooling around with this. I'm telling you. Well, go ahead. Tell us. We're listening. Yeah, and you got this guy's rapt attention. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys fool around as much as you want, you know, but it, I guarantee this will come back to haunt you because, trust me, every mummy comes with a curse. <laughs> wow, what's his problem? Unhappy childhood. He was a mummy's boy. <laughs> <laughs> It's time to play the Possum Lodge word game. Our contestant today is Mr. Mike Hammer. And he's going to be playing for this plastic frog that croaks whenever you walk in front of it. Okay, let's just leave it there. Okay. Now, um, um, hide, hide your ears and plug your eyes. Okay, now, Red, yeah. you've got 30 seconds to get Mike Hammer to say this word. Bar. Bar. Yeah, all right, Ed, all right. And go! Okay, Mike. Lawyers are called to this. The gates of Hades to burn in the flames of eternal damnation? No. All right, let's say you're going into the United States and the customs officer knows you've got a record. Okay. Yeah. So he won't let you in. He blanks your entry. I wouldn't let him anywhere near my entry. <laughs> okay, all right, okay, okay. Okay, Mike, Mike, when you get up in the morning, you look out your window, what's the first thing you see? Bars. Okay, no, 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 that's not exactly right. Okay. It's close, okay. but... Okay, okay, Mike, it's not bars, but... Gay bars? No. <laughs> no, no. Gay kung fu bars? Oh, come on. You're almost out of time, Red. Okay, Mike, when you were a kid, your mother would give you a treat. She'd give you a chocolate gun. <laughs> but I didn't eat it, though. I used it to rob one of the big kids. I got his candy bar. Harold. Uncle Red. What, what are you doing in the utility closet? Checking out the cleaning supplies, Harold, huh? <laughs> Uncle Red, that's stealing. Oh, Harold, this is a big company. They got lots of bucks. They expect a certain amount of shrinkage. It's in the budget. <laughs> well, it's also on the security camera. <laughs> oh, okay. No, no good. No good. You know, I, you know, Harold, I, I couldn't sleep at night. I was worried you were in a low security building. It was good to know. Yes, well, there's also a camera in the closet. Oh, 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 good, good. Good, 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 Harold. That's, that's good to know. I'm glad I checked that out. You know, Uncle Red, I think you have a misconception about the relationship between an employee and an employer. Well, I don't actually have an employer, Harold. Well, that's no big surprise. 
You have your arm around me. Well, that's because I'm trying to be a friend, and friends don't let friends do bad things. The arm, Harold. Oh, well, uh, Uncle Brad, I work for this company. This company is tied to my future. You know, if you steal from the company, well, you're stealing from me. What's this about, Harold? Oh, I'm trying to make a point. Is this about the pen set? No, the stapler. Fine. Thank you. Did you steal my pen set, too? This is the repair shop part of the show we call If It Ain't Broke, You're Not Trying. <laughs> Joining us today is Hap Shaughnessy. What do you got for us there, Hap? Well, this is a lie detector, Red. It's supposed to light up and buzz if anybody tells a lie, but it seems to go off sporadically for no reason. It's not me, is it? <laughs> you not telling the truth? No, that's impossible. <laughs> Seems to be working fine, huh? No, 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 it isn't. What's this? What's this? My name is Hap Shaughnessy, and I'm the first man to swim under both poles, climb Mount Fuji, and land on the moon. Oh, I guess it's all right now. No, 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 no. I'll take a look at it here. Yeah, yeah, you might as well. Wouldn't hurt to check it out. No. I wish I had done that with the front suspension when I set the land speed record. <laughs> 800 miles an hour, straddling a 747 engine strapped to a grocery cart. <laughs> Luckily, I was in the child seat, so I was facing backwards when she went off the track. You know how grocery carts always have that one shaky wheel? There's a problem. Got a blown fuse here, huh? huh? I think I got one of these. Oh, yeah. I wonder how that could happen. I was running it on, on normal house power. I built my own thermonuclear generator, but I'm not going to start it up until I'm sure I don't want a family. <laughs> Well, it might have been a bad fuse, or maybe you got a spike in the line or something. There we yeah. go, there we go. Give that a try. Say something. Say something. say something. say something. What do you want me to say? say I don't something. know what to say. say. I never know what to say. Right after the war, Eisenhower wanted me to meet Churchill. And I'm figuring, oh boy, I... You know, one thing that's gotten real popular over the last few years is gardening. I don't mean the ordinary kind of gardening where you grow carrots and tomatoes and barley and hops. I'm talking about the fancy gardens, you know, with the exotic plants in them, the waterfall and the sound and the lights and everything. So today I'm going to show you how to make a cheap yet impressive centerpiece for your garden. Now, I know you could just wire speakers and lights all over your yard, but then the next thing you know, you electrocuted a groundhog and the green pieces are all in. So we're going to go another way. We're going to use wind power. Now, all you need is an old bike and a set of drums. You can get a full set of drums uh, pretty cheap. All you gotta do is hang around a music store until some parent comes in and buys a set of drums for their kid. <laughs> Just get their address, wait about a month, you'll be able to buy the whole set back for about 10 cents on the dollar. All right. Now, first step is you wanna turn the bike into a windmill stand. You're pretty much on your own there. I don't believe there's a manual for that particular conversion. <laughs> Okay, step two now. I just got to mount the bass drum onto the windmill stand. I've already attached the unit to the bicycle wheel using the handyman's secret weapon <laughs> duct tape. But I want you to notice something here. I've had to remove the struts on this side of the bicycle, which means that I've weakened the structural integrity uh, of the bike itself. So I have to compensate for that by really horsing down the axle nut on the other side. <laughs> Okay, we're just about done here. I've uh, added a couple of drumsticks, which actually got hinged to the rim of the drum. So as she goes around, uh, they're going to hit the floor tom and then the snare. And then on the top side, they slam up against the bass drum. So I get a downbeat on the bass drum. I get my back beat on the snare. I get a funky riff happening on the floor tom, all against a steady ride on the cymbals. This is not just a garden ornament. This is a happening. <laughs> so remember, the women don't find you handsome. They should at least find you handy. Now all we got to do is wait for the wind. talk to you middle-aged do-it-yourselfers out there. I know you're the kind of guy that when something breaks, you think it's your right and your duty to try to fix it. <laughs> Even if it doesn't break, sometimes you want to just take something apart to see how it works before you'll use it. <laughs> and a lot of times when you take it apart to see how it works, it doesn't. <laughs> Okay, I know this is a key part of your behavior. It might even be how you define yourself. 
but I'm telling you, there are certain things you just shouldn't fool around with. A portable dialysis machine. <laughs> Somebody else's wife. <laughs> Anything with one of those radioactive stickers on it, you know? <laughs> I know this is gonna be hard to hear from me, but I gotta tell you, there are certain times you just gotta say, I can't fix this, okay? <laughs> don't, don't say it out loud. Just put all the parts of the VCR or the computer back to where they were, or as close as you can get them, you know? And then what you say real loud is, boy, this is a bad design. <laughs> I would never have put the comm stator so close to the pulse regulator. On that. <laughs> then what you want to do is go over to the phone. Not the one you fixed, the other one, the one that works. <laughs> do yourself a favor and call a professional. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. doing that. Yeah. Your little mummy was an Egyptian prince at 600 BC. <laughs> well, it says his entire family was strangled. Yeah. And, and, and he's vowed to come back and return the favor. Yeah. I told you there was a curse. This mummy's dangerous. I got him under control, Dalton. Hold her right there, bandage boy. <laughs> I give up. <laughs> well, you know, uh, these people that work in the museums, eh? they must have a lot of laughs. <laughs> Oh, and here's Sir laughs a lot. This armor is yeah. great. I can handle anything with this stuff on. Except rain. Oh. You, know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know, it must have been really neat sort of living in the olden days, right? You know, those days before neighborhood watch and police radios and stuff? Uh, like, I'm just thinking, you know, you're about the same body style as the... You know, we could do a switch and... Play a real trick on Dalton, huh? Huh? Okay. <laughs> yeah, but let's not kill him or anything, no, no. okay? No, right. no, 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 I'll just tell you what, you get that armor off. I got some old bandages down in the basement. We'll just, you know. Okay, we'll yeah. put them on the workbench downstairs. I'm gonna get me a drink. Oh, okay, but, but you can't drink here. You have to go to an all-night tavern. <laughs> <laughs> you like that one? <laughs> Oh, Red Green, this is great. I was wondering when you'd get here. <laughs> then you see me get out of my van? Well, yeah, but it's a lot of steps for somebody like you with the... Well, it's great to see you. <laughs> oh, I've got some exciting news. I'm going to be turning my fire watchtower into a small educational museum of the forest. You're going to be one of the exhibits, Gordon? <laughs> no, no, I'm going to be the museum curator. Do you know what that means? Not in this case, no. I'm going to be in charge of all the exhibits. Oh. oh here's my first museum piece here. Can you uh, figure out what this is? Well, yeah, that's poison ivy. No! <laughs> that's right. That's yeah. exactly what that is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, here's another one. Can you uh, tell me what this is? Well, yeah, that's just a slice of tree showing you the tree rings there. That's right. Yeah. Now, what can we learn from this slice of tree, as you call it? That you have a chainsaw, which scares me, frankly. <laughs> oh, no. We can learn far more than that. Allow me to educate. Do you see this outermost ring here? You mean the bark? That's correct. Now, I can tell by looking at this ring that this is exactly when this tree was cut down. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, just by looking at it. Now, let's move on to the next five outermost rings. I can tell by looking at these that all of these years had something in common. The summers were short, cool, and very, very, very lonely. <laughs> and if you look closer, okay, you can see that there wasn't a woman here, or here, or here, or here, or here. All right, Carl. Never. Okay. Is it possible that you're letting your personal problems affect this? No, no, I know there's never been a woman here. I like to know I'm the museum curator. No, no, okay. yeah. Uh, Gort, 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 it's time for you to make a decision. Yeah. If you want to protect the forest, you have to live here in the fire tower. If you want to meet a woman, you're going to have to move into town and get professional help. <laughs> so, what's it going to be? Girls or squirrels? <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha,
Squirrels. <laughs> Just don't let them bury you, Gord. <laughs> Just enjoying a drink of pop, waiting for a little help to move a fridge. Where are my helpers? Oh. Uh, some golfers may end up as my helpers, whether they want to be or not. Hey, Dalton. That's Walter. No, 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 not just yet. I'll give you the ball back. You gotta help me. Just gotta move the fridge just down a few steps. Just a couple of steps down. <laughs> and, uh, it, you know, it, it looks worse than it is, guys. Just, I think once we get it, hey, look, it's not, we're not going up, you know. <laughs> everybody grab a corner, just, it's not that bad. Up you go, hoist up. One, two, oh, everybody together. Two, three, up. Everybody up, up. Everybody up. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. I don't know. Okay, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, yeah, no, I should have emptied it. Okay, all right. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Hey, don't make a big deal out of it. Let's take a minute here. There we go. Uh, okay. That's all right. Away we go. Everybody, grab a corner. Let's go. Let's go. One, two, three. Up she goes there. And, uh, and uh, okay, we're doing good. We're doing fine. Okay. Now, Walter's a young fella, doesn't have a girlfriend, so he has power. <laughs> there we go. All right, look at this. Up, take her up, take her up. Sometimes it's easier for one man to do a job, as he, you know, he can balance it, and uh, you know, then he's, he's got a, what they call a balanced load, and none of the rest of us have that. Take her up there, get up over here. Okay, okay, now, now Walter, set her, set her down on your head. Set her down right on your head, that flat part there. A little bit flat, a minute. There we go. There we go. Okay, now, come down, come down. Easy, 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 easy. Use the hand railings, that's what they're there for. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Where, hey, where, where's my can of pop? Oh, man, I could really. Uh, anybody see my pop? Oh, there it is. All right. Oh, oh. All right, now, don't try this at home, kids. Easy, watch out. Oh! 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 my gosh. Oh! 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 boy, boy, boy. Oh! my Oh! 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 Uh, oh, there he is. Uh, boy, you seem a little chilly. <laughs> All right, there's your golf ball back. You earned it. <laughs> Thanks, Walter. Oh, hi. Hey, how are you? <laughs> oh, right. Uh, welcome to Mike's Teen Talk. Uh, today I want to talk about blaming your parents. <laughs> it's important not to do that. You know, I never blame my mom or any of my dads. <laughs> they were too busy living their own lives, you know, trying to make ends meet and coming up with a believable alibi. <laughs> Maybe it's time you grew up a little bit, eh? Maybe it's time you became an adult. And to do that, you gotta stop blaming your parents and put the blame where it really belongs on the system. <laughs> the system really sucks. Like, say, say you, you, you pilfer for a little money from your parents, they might ground you for a few nights in your little home, right? Well, you pilfer some money from the bank and they'll ground you for a few years in their big house. <laughs> or say you're fed up with your parents because they, they won't let you borrow their only car. General Motors has millions of cars and they get really upset if you borrow theirs. <laughs> and talk about your parents' rules. Have you ever seen the penal code? Talk about strict! <laughs> so I'd stick with my parents if I were you. Sure, they're tough, but at least with your parents, you're eligible for parole when you're 18. <laughs> That's it. Oh, 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 oh. Great, hey, found the bandages? Oh, man, you look terrific. <laughs> you can scare the crap out of Dalton. <laughs> it was great. I think he's coming now, so. 
I'll just have some fun with it, eh? All right. Red, <laughs> you wanted to see me? Yeah, you know, Dalton, I'm thinking about this curse of the mummy thing you were talking about. I think there might be something to that. Why, what, did, did something bad happen? No, 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 nothing happened, but, you know, you just never know. So I, Red! Why take chances? Isn't Red! What, what? I think I saw that mummy move! See, you know, you know, you get so carried away. Why, why you can't just go along with it? The mummy! The mummy! Now, you see, this is why nobody believes you, because you no. overreact to no. everything. Now, don't, can't it's, you... a lie. <laughs> it's a lie! It's a lie! What are you talking about? It's a lie! Go take the bandages off. That's right, that's right, that's good, good. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 come on. It's not the mummy, uh, it's only uh, Mike. Come on, it's like we're uh, playing a joke on you. It's only Mike. Uh, it's just Mike uh, the solid is. Uh, Mike, uh, Mike. Uh, yes, Mr. Green? Um, if my wife is watching, uh, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. I'm hoping you can explain what just happened here. Unless you think it's better that I don't know, like, that way you handled the whole childbirth thing. Uh, the rest of you, thanks for watching. And on behalf of myself and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your mummy on the ice. Okay, we gotta start the meeting. Everybody, everybody gotta sit down, sit down, everybody sit down. Yep, sit down, sit down, sit down. All rise. Blanco, Omni, Flancus, Moritati, sit down. All right, men, bow your heads for the man's prayer. I'm a man, but I can change if I have to, I guess.